It's me. I'm back. It's Ann. Yes, anybody who watches my cream video where I'm wearing this particular shirt in this particular combo, yes, this is. I have just taken off the cream look and I'm getting ready to do my last aftershock and color workshop grays for the hubby pick for the week. Now, I've currently got on, just got my Ipsy bag, so I've got some stuff out of that. Got on the Pixie H2O moisturizer, and this is pretty nifty stuff. And then with that, I put on the e.l.f. Foundation Serum just because I didn't want to pile a lot of stuff on. Now, I did my very lightly colored um, cream eyeshadow look, and I've wiped all that down. Yes, I've still got some leftover mascara. It happens. I'm going to start... And see, I, I'm giving you both eyes this time, guys. Both eyes. Yes, I'm using my fingers. Using my fingers again. Yes, I'm using my fingers. They're the very first tools that we had. Yes, I'm using my fingers. I know, for some people, the idea of using their fingers to do this just freaks them out. I'm good with it. If it bothers you to use your fingers, that's, you know, up to you. If you want to use a sponge, go for it. If you want to use a brush, go for it. Whatever works for you to put your makeup on. Now, see, when I first started doing my own makeup, it was pretty much fingers or the little sponge tip applicators or Q-tips or whatever other cotton swab you happen to have. Um... Q-tips being a brand and not a not a generic name. However, at this point in our tiny little consumerist lives, names like Q-tips and Kleenex and not so long back ago, Xerox all started to become a generic name for things that were they were actually brands of. Everybody and their Uncle Fudd was calling any kind of copier beyond mimeograph, calling it a Xerox. They even called Kodak copiers Xeroxes, if you talk to people in the office. Um, you know, if you, wanted a, if you wanted a facial tissue, you asked for a Kleenex. Everybody and their Uncle Bud started doing the year, ask for a Kleenex. And Q-tips was so ubiquitous that 
It didn't matter if it who it was made. It could be a Johnson and Johnson baby's earbud, and people still called it a Q-tip. That was how it went. Now, I've got my AOA Studio white base down. I love this stuff. I really, the formula is comfortable. It's wonderful. Now, like I said, I have my Ipsy for this month. However, I don't do the big, let's open the Ipsy and I'll be surprised because I just, there are so many of those. There really are. Not everybody gets a completely identical one. Sometimes if they've got like an eye color in, people will get different shades from that particular company. In this case, it was INO Cosmetics. And I was going, what in the heck does INMO stand for? And I'm like looking at it, and it says INMO Cosmetics. And I'm going, and then I saw the side of the box that had the little shadow in it. And it says, I'm not missing out. And I'm going, oh. I-N-M-O, the complete office opposite of FOMO, the fear of missing out. Now, the cream product that I used on my eye look in the last video actually is very close to matching this particular shade, which is called Super Base from that I-N-M-O line. But this one is a powder, and I can't wait to try it. Now, I'm trust, I still haven't completely figured out what it is I'm going to do with the Aftershock palette this time. Now, let me remind you of what it is I'm working with here. It's a really intense palette. It really is. And it's got some beautiful stuff in it. I just have to figure out exactly what I'm going to do to myself with this. Let me see. What haven't I... I haven't used the... I've used the reds. But there's three reds. I haven't used the purple purple. I used most of the blues. I've used the yellow. I've used the orange. Hmm. Let me see. I think... Okay, the purple right here, BPM, beats per minute, unless they're going to call it something else. Let me see, because I haven't used that purple on anything yet that I remember off the top of my head. So... Let's see. It looks like it may be a satin and not just a matte matte because it, it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, but nowhere near the shimmer some of the other shades do. Purple is a tricky color. You sometimes find really, really good purples, and sometimes they're really, really, really kind of patchy. 
purple formulas. Well, purples and blues and some greens are just a pain in the ass. And you have to be careful what you're doing with them. Because if they're a decent Decent depth of color, they can take over her in a hurry. That's actually really, really pretty. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to put at the front, but I'm liking this purple. It's not looking patchy. It's not so dark that that some of the purples you get a hold of you're going is that purple or is it black or is it you know you get so much blue background in it you're going is it really purple or is it a blue so it's this is a nice medium shade of purple. It's not too light and it's not horrendously dark. But again, like I've done with some of the other colors in this palette, I'm barely touching the the color pan. Because I don't want it to just be way too much. You know? I don't want to overdo. Because it's an intense color. Oh, that is pretty. Yeah. Okay, yes, I know. When I first started my channel, I told everybody how much I dislike purple. And it's not for the fact that it looks bad on me. Purple actually looks pretty good on me. However, my grandmother was so into purple that it was scary. I mean, she, her bedroom, she had purple velour drapes, a purple carpet, purple velour bedspread. The walls were purple. And I just, I got sick of it. <laughs> I'm I, sick of it. It's like the woman made me crazy. <laughs> Okay, now, what the heck, what the heck am I going to put on the front of that eye? I don't want to do the pink, that's too predictable. I may do this, which is the drop color. Now, I've used this blue on my eyes already, but, I don't want to go into the reds and the oranges because then I'm going to end up very possibly with mud. Pardon me, it's called pollen. Yeah, because that orange might be fun. But I'm afraid I would end up with mud. And I really don't want to do mud. And I don't want to do the dark blue. Because I think that would actually be a little too much. I could try doing the dark blue 
and seeing if I can get it blend out enough. Okay, let's see. This means if I screw up, y'all get to see it. Okay, that's not too bad. Just keep blending that out back into the edge of the purple. And that was, again, barely a tap into that color, I think. I'm going to have to do something from the grays palette on the very inner corner to keep from going too dark. I was thinking about just putting something, one of the darker grays in the outer, in the far outer corner to Deepen that up just a little bit, but I'm thinking, thinking, <laughs> yeah, thinking, I may have to do something like a pale silver on the inner corner to keep this from going just way too dark all the way around. And yes, I'm going to keep blending that over because this is another one where I'm going, I don't really want any harsh demarcation lines. All out right there from the purple. Pick that up just a little bit. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to take this dark, well, it's, it's the next to the last. This one here is kind of a shimmery charcoal. Just kind of tap that on a little bit just to deepen that outer corner just a tiny, tiny bit. By the way, in case nobody's ever told you before, dramatic eyes do not require 10 tons of makeup. Half ton will do it. Uh, 
again, what you're looking for is technique more than just loading color. There is a time and a place for loading color. And some looks just don't cut it for drama unless you are loading color and loading it heavy. Some looks you can get away with a little less load and still get payoff. Let's just sneak this down here, right like that. Carry that dark gray right under. so that we keep that connection with the upper lid. And then, Now this one is just a little bit smaller than the one I was using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start back this way. And I will probably spritz this just a bit with my homemade spray. If I haven't ever introduced you to my homemade spray, I'll explain it in just a second. You see this bottle? I started off when I first started on working on this stuff. I used a little bit of setting spray when I was spritzing my brushes. And I don't have the budget for that. So then I picked this up at Dollar Tree. And then I just put plain water in it. Which will work. It does. It does work. However... People swear by the Mac Fix Plus, and the biggest difference between water and this and the Mac Fix Plus is the addition of glycerin. Glycerin is great stuff. It's a wonderful moisturizer. Vegetable glycerin. I paid five bucks for this bottle. You only need about 10 drops for this when I make a full one. So, well, I put in just about that much. And then I put in water to about here. And then I put in a little toner. Now, you can use rose water toner. You can use your witch hazel. Doesn't matter. And I use it to set, to, to wet my brush with. Now, if you look at the ingredients for Mac Fix Plus, there's water, there's glycerin, a couple other things that they've got with chem big, long chemical names. However, if you go to the DIY channels, they will tell you the same thing, which is where I found this recipe. It was on the DIY channels where they said, here, just do this. Get a little spritz bottle that's got a good sprayer. This little dollar bottle has got a beautiful fine mister on it. It's beautiful.
and put your stuff in it and spray away because let me tell you I ain't got the money to spend on Mac Fix Plus and as much as that bottle looks like fun and everybody swears by the mister on it I'm not buying even one bottle just to get the mister after I use the rest of the material. I have been using this now for several months. And I started, started using this version in October last year. I started my channel in August of last year, 2018, in case you're watching this in a whole other season. But I've barely touched that bottle of glycerin to keep this thing full. And it doesn't take but a little spritz to get a really nice foil going. Now I will have some people that, that you're going to have some people that will tell you don't ever put a damp brush into your color pans. And I'm going to tell you if you really want to keep those colors for any real length of time, they're right. Because eventually, even though the first few times, if you get some hard pan top on your color pan, the first few times you'll be able to do the, the scotch tape trick or just kind of scrape it off a little bit. If you've got one of the um, mixing tools or something like that, the first few times you'll be able to just kind of scrape it off and get back down to usable pigment. But, you do it a few too many times, not only are you wasting all that pigment that you've got to scrape through, but eventually that wet brush is going to transfer enough fluid that it will go all the way to the bottom of that color pan. And let me tell you, you get all the way to the bottom of the color pan, there is nothing you can do to fix it. Nothing. So I've got my little rag over here, and on the way to the color pan, I stop, I dust it off a little bit, I pick up some more, I come over and spray it again. So it's a fresh spray routinely. So I am not sticking that wet brush down in the color pan. And if you don't believe me, there's the dry version of this silver. Because this brush is dry again. And I don't necessarily want all that foil under the eye. Just because, just because. On a counter. Got a little bit of mascara getting flicked off the lower lashes there. That's looking pretty good. Now, I 
eyeliner. Yes, I usually go off camera to do my eyeliner because my hands are shaky. And I've actually had one or two people ask me if I'm really doing my own eyeliner because of that. And I'm going, look, my husband's hands are shakier than mine. And if I put a finger out here to kind of focus on, on this eye, and put just a little tension, this one will behave. I have to be a little more aggressive with this one. Now, see, this is pretty much what you see on this eye most of the time. And I'm going to tell you straight out, unless you've already got wrinkles and crepiness, like I've got on my eyes, don't do this. Do not put tension on your eyelids. Just don't do it. Because once they start to crease like that, they don't ever stop. And it just gets worse. Why did I do it? Because mine are already creased up. And if I don't pull just a little bit, I end up with tiger striping because the skin will fold over itself. And then every place there was a fold, there will be white underneath there or whatever, not the eyeliner color, underneath there because it's folded over itself and hidden some. All right, let's see. Now, I bought a Sephora play box during one of the previous sales. And part of it was one of the little tiny Sephora eye pencils. And yeah, I sharpened this once. I use it rather sparingly because this is not that much different in size than it was when it got here originally. They sent a little tiny fidgety splinter of a pencil. But, it stays in the waterline like a dream. So, I was very happy to get this. But like I said, I use it very sparingly. Because I'm not about to buy a big one. And I cannot guarantee that any of the leftover play boxes that I bought from the clearance section are going to have another one in it. And I don't look at Sephora often enough to know if they sell these samples regularly.
My other Sephora piece that I got, well, this one came in one of the boxes. This is a wonderful little sponge. I really like it. And then I got a one of their mini palettes. It's called Cookie Dough. It's all beiges. Yes, beiges, but it's pretty. And and it's Sephora. And and it's something that I can look at and use next to some other less expensive stuff and go, yep, there's a difference between the less expensive stuff and the high price stuff. Now, granted, Sephora is not really up there in the high numbers since it's the house brand for a retailer, but it really is a way to compare some of the stuff that I pick up at like AOA Studio and I've started looking at JB and Eve's that kind of thing because AOA Studio has a lot of small palettes JB and Eve's has things like the clean color and Malibu Glitz, but they're larger palettes. Some of their more extensive palettes. No, they're not a dollar like AOA Studio, but they are very, very, very price conscious. It's just, you know, we're talking about a larger palette with, you know, 9, 12, 16 colors and whatever for four or five bucks. They've got some gorgeous stuff. I'm still, I still haven't had a chance to order from them yet. I've got to wait. I've got... Our refrigerator died, so I've got to take care of that first. Now, the other thing is... I absolutely love one of the other samples I got in that Sephora play box, and it was the Bad Gal Bang Mascara. I love that stuff. It was beautiful. I can't afford it. I just, no. This is the Wet n Wild Max Volume Plus. Now, one of the things I love about the Bad Gal Bang is the wand. Now, remember, flexi, 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 like the Bad Gal Bang. Wet and wild, when you first open, like these, they're wet. They're very wet. I've had this one a couple, three weeks now. I opened it up. I let some air get into it. I waved the wand around for a while. And then, you know, I waved the tube around for a while. Closed it back up. Stuck it in the drawer. Didn't close it completely tight. And then about a week later, started actually using it. And I'm not mad. I've got my flexible wand. And I've got fair decent coverage with the mascara. And some pretty nice length to go with it. I'm not mad about it. Okay. 
Okay, what am I gonna do next? Probably do something with my big mouth, but all right, let's see. What have I got? Okay, another piece that I got from the Ipsy bag is called Lord and Berry Maxi Matte Crayon Lipstick. Now, they tell you on the idea of putting this stuff on that outline your lips first and then put some lip balm on and then kind of do the thing. Now, I'm not sure. The color is called here and now. I'm not sure this is necessarily the perfect color to go with the eyes. However, I'm not worried about perfect color. At least not this time. What I am thinking about is just using this to see how it goes. Okay, outline, fill in a bit. Now, this is definitely a matte color. It moves pretty easily when you're putting it on, but it is definitely a dry product. Now, this is my Skin Iceland that came in one of the other Ipsy bags. Because it said to use a good quality lip balm. So I'm using a good quality lip balm. I think I like that. Now it's suggested if you want to do, excuse me, long lasting wear, it is suggested that once you put your lip balm on and get the first coat down well, mm, that's nice, that you put another coat of the pencil on and then blot. And I'm going, I don't want to. <laughs> That's a bit much. Because I'm doing this more for the heck of it than anything. I'm doing this just for the bid. Because it's fairly late in the evening. So, well... For some of you, it will be, because I'm on Pacific time, and it's 8.04 in the evening here. So, since there's about three hours difference, we'll see how that works out, because Oregon has, has voted to get rid of the switch of time and just leave it at daylight savings and see how that goes. So we may have some odd time changes between us at some point. Okay. 
Now, I'm not going to get real ham on this. I really am not. I'm going to take my Ofra from another Ipsy bag. Use my Ofra highlighter in Star Island. Right here in the corner just a little bit. Don't need a lot of shine because it's already got quite a bit of shine going here. Just stick it in there. Drag this through right here. Throw that down. And I'm going to take my Ticket to Brazil Wet and Wild. And I'm just going to kind of dust here and there. Because, like I said, I'm not really doing a whole lot of anything at this point. Because I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to slap a little extra color around. I do this little bit of color on the nose because I've got an itty bitty nose. And because I wear glasses, this space right here kind of gets covered up and lost. So, you know, I try to unlose it just a little bit. Because it's kind of shallow there. And I want it to look like I've got a little more depth to my face. No, I'm not putting blusher on. I'm thinking this is probably quite enough. I'm thinking I like the way that turned out. What do you think? No, really, let me know. And I do not find that lipstick color offensive with the rest of it. Anyway, that's it for this week's challenge. Tomorrow being Sunday, since it's Saturday night, the hubs will be picking out week three, and I get to start all over again. We will see what he comes up with and what I come up with, starting again on Sunday. So... If you liked it, please let me know. Slip, leave me a comment. If you're feeling generous, throw me a thumbs up. If you like what you see and want to see more of it, hit the subscription and the little dingle bell. It's much easier to find if I've done something new if you've got the subscription and the dingle bell. I want to thank everybody who has helped me get to the 100 subscriber mark. I am thrilled to have hit there finally. And I am grateful to all of you who have stuck with me from the very beginning and are still with me now. And I am happy to welcome all of the new people who've showed up. If I'm still really over a hundred because it keeps fluctuating kind of between a hundred and a hundred and four. If I'm still really over a hundred come the end of the month, 
I am going to be arranging for a small giveaway and it doesn't matter whether you are in the makeup or if you're one of my gaming buddies or if you're, you know, not interested in buying from a particular shop because it's going to be a generic gift card, you know, like a prepaid Visa or prepaid MasterCard, whatever. It's not going to be a lot. I'm not going to tell you how much yet because I have to figure my budget. But there will be something. And it's going to be a random comment pick from a video that I'm going to do specifically for the giveaway. Again, I want to thank everybody for hanging in there and staying with me to get to this first big milestone. And love you lots. But even as much as I love you, there is still no bail money. Be good.